In this video, you'll learn how to build and publish a subgraph to the Graph Explorer with Subgraph Studio. The subgraph that we'll be building today will be indexing data from the Zora Smart Contract. Zora is a popular NFT marketplace. To be successful in this guide, you should have a MetaMask wallet installed as an extension to your web browser, as well as Node.js installed locally on your machine. To get started, navigate to thegraph.com slash studio. Here you'll see a button to connect your wallet. Choose MetaMask and then choose the address that you would like to authenticate with. To create a subgraph, click Create a Subgraph. Here, give your subgraph a name and then click Continue. This view allows you to see information about your subgraph, including the name, the status, the slug, and the deployment key. You can also edit metadata about the subgraph, including the description, the source code URL, the website URL, and up to three categories. Now that the subgraph has been initialized in the studio, open your terminal so we can start writing some code. The first thing you'll need to do is install the Graph CLI globally using npm install g at graph protocol slash graph CLI. If the Graph CLI is installed successfully, you should now have the graph binary. To create a new subgraph, you can use the graph init command. Here we'll pass in additional arguments for the contract name, to index the contract events, to set the product as Subgraph Studio, and then set the from contract pasting in the contract address. You can copy the contract address from the description below or visit docs.zora.co slash ZoraOS slash dev and copy the media contract address. For the subgraph name, paste in the name of the subgraph that you created in Subgraph Studio. You should now be able to choose the defaults for the rest of the options. Next, change into the new directory and you should see all of the files that have been created for the subgraph boilerplate. Next, let's go ahead and open the project in our text editor. The first file that we will update is the GraphQL schema located at schema.graphql. Here we can delete the existing boilerplate code and create a new entity for a token type. The token will have fields for ID, token ID, content URI, metadata URI, created at timestamp, creator and owner. The creator and owner will be of a user type that we'll create next. The user type will have fields for ID, tokens owned, and tokens created. One-to-many relationships can be created using the derived from directive, passing in the field of the parent type from which the relationship was derived. Save this file and open subgraph.yaml. Subgraph.yaml describes the main configuration for your subgraph. In addition to some of the boilerplate code that we will see in this subgraph.yaml file, the CLI was also able to pull down the ABIs for this smart contract. By passing in the index events flag, boilerplate event handlers have also been created for us. The first update that we'll make is setting the start block. The start block is an optional setting that allows you to define from which block in the chain the data source will start indexing. If no start block is defined, the subgraph will index events starting from the genesis block. Next, update the entities to be token and user to match the entities defined in our GraphQL schema. Finally, the only two event handlers that we'll be using are token URI updated and transfer, so we can delete all of the others.
In order to make working with smart contracts, events, and entities easy and type safe, the Graph CLI can generate assembly script types from the subgraphs, GraphQL schema, and the contract ABIs included in the data sources. To do so, let's jump back to our terminal and run the codegen command. When the codegen is complete, you should see a file named schema.ts and a folder named token located in the generated folder. The last thing we need to do is write our mappings. To do so, open src slash mapping.ts. Next, we'll import references to the token URI updated and transfer events, as well as a reference to the token contract from the code that was generated for us by the CLI. These imports will give us type safety as well as functions that will allow us to interact directly with the smart contract. Next, we'll import the token and the user from the schema. These imports will allow us to interact with the graph node. The interactions that we'll be using are facilitated by the graph TypeScript library. The graph TypeScript library gives us the following. An API for working with smart contracts, events, blocks, transactions, and smart contract values. A store API to load and save entities from and to the graph node store. A log API to log and debug messages to the graph node output and the graph explorer. An IPFS API to load files from IPFS. A JSON API to parse JSON data. A crypto API to use cryptographic functions and low-level primitives to translate between different type systems such as Ethereum, JSON, GraphQL, and AssemblyScript. Next, we'll create our handle transfer function. Let's walk through what this function is doing. We first try to load the token from the graph node by calling token.load, passing in the token ID. If the token does not exist, we create a new token, setting the creator, token ID, and created at timestamp from values passed in from the event. Next, we call out to the token contract itself to get and set the content URI and the metadata URI. Here, we set the token owner and then save the token to the store. Next, we check to see if the user exists. If they do not, we go ahead and create a new user. The handle token URI updated function updates the content URI of the token and then saves it back to the store. Now we're finished writing code and we can deploy and publish the subgraph. To publish the subgraph, we're going to need the deploy key. To do so, we can go back to our subgraph in the studio and copy the deploy key to our clipboard. To configure the deploy key, we can run graph auth dash dash studio and then paste in the deploy key when prompted. To deploy, we can run graph deploy dash dash studio, passing in the name of our subgraph and a setting a version label. Once your subgraph has been deployed successfully, it should show up in your subgraph studio dashboard and begin syncing. In this view, you should see the GraphQL playground as well as logs and details for the subgraph. To test everything out, we can run the example query given to us in the GraphQL playground. We can also define our own queries by updating arguments and fields. Our subgraph is now ready to publish to the decentralized network. To test how this works, we can publish to the Rinkeby network. To do so, I'll first update my network to be the Rinkeby test network instead of the Ethereum mainnet. For Rinkeby test tokens, visit faucet.rinkeby.io. 
To publish your subgraph to Rinkeby, click Publish, choose Rinkeby as the network, and then click Publish again. Once the subgraph is successfully deployed, you should see links to view it both in the Subgraph Explorer as well as Etherscan. Next, click View Subgraph and Explorer. Here we can now test out signaling on our subgraph. To test signaling on a subgraph, you will need some test GRT. You can request TestGRT in the Graph Protocol Discord in the TestNet Faucet channel. Once you've received your TestNet GRT, click Signal. Here, enter the amount of GRT that you would like to signal and then click Approve. Once you've confirmed the amount, Click on Signal to finalize signaling. Once signaling is successful, you should see yourself show up as a curator.